welcome to another episode of Absolutely Obsolete. Today I will be focusing on the Sega Master System. Now, this was my first ever console. First console I ever played. It was the first console I grew up with. And to me, this encapsulated what a, a console was and is. I was about, I think I was about five, maybe six when I got this, and I was born in 1987, so my family didn't have a lot of money, so we had to make do, and I was always a couple of console generations behind, so this wasn't too far away from the PlayStation 1 being, being created, and yeah, one day this turned up, I uh, opened it up, and it was a Sega Master System 2. That's the model I had. I never had the number one. My friend had that, and I know it's a superior um, console. Um, it's got RGB, and it, it has a better signal, because this thing only has RF. And if you know RF, like I do, the quality isn't great. Every game looks like you're playing a snow level, because of all that you know, interference and stuff. But I want to make this video one, because it was my first console, and to be honest, I love it to death, hence this. And the second reason was mainly due to because, mainly due because of my dad, because at the moment he's not really well, he's suffering from cancer, so it's obviously a hard time. But I think memories are a strong thing, and Having a console like this and having memories of playing it with my dad, that's going to always stay with me. Um, so, really, that's one reason I want to speak about it. Because I remember, I must have been about 6, 7, and I was playing one of the first games I ever had, which was this one, this little beauty, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So while uh, everyone was raving about number 2 on the Mega Drive, and, well, the Saturn and the upcoming PlayStation, I was playing this, and to be honest, I didn't know any different, I didn't know anything about this, I didn't read magazines or anything, so to me this was like the pinnacle of gaming. I loved the graphics, they were crisp, they were bright, colourful, and the music was great as well, and it was a challenging game, and it was the first game I ever played, a platformer, and to be honest I fell in love with Sega with this very first game. And I always remember how my dad used to say, on the lava levels, he used to go, Oh, look out, son. Look out for the drink. Because uh, he used to always call lava and water the same thing, drink. It's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? But I'll always remember that. And every time I said that, I'd always hit the lava. Typical. Always fell in front of your dad, don't you? You always make the stupidest things happen. But yeah, fantastic game. So if you do pick up a mass system, I definitely would say buy this. The second game I remember was Ghostbusters and this I didn't own this was um, borrowed not this exact copy but this was borrowed from uh, my sister's friend and I'll be honest with you it's a very cryptic game it's not straightforward it's not like a platform or anything it's almost like a maze and you have to keep going to the ghosts and attacking them I never really worked out how to play it to be honest but it was just the fact I was playing Ghostbusters. I was playing a movie that was that was the first kind of film tie-in I ever played, and that was cool enough for me. It didn't matter that I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, it was just a cool game. Now this was one of my favourite games, Ninja Gaiden. I rented this so many times. We used to rent at um, a store in Mansfield. It was near Tesco, I think, a Tesco, and there's a rental store, and it had loads of Master System games, Mega Drive, and everything. They were just white black boxes, uh, white boxes with black writing on, sorry, and you just walk in, pick your game, and go out. So this is one I rented regularly on a regular basis. It's uh, it was a great game. It's like the NES one, but it was apparently meant to be uh, a trilogy of games, but they only ever released one. 
but like any ninja Aiden, it's hard as nails, tough, challenging, and dare I say it looks better than the NES version, so I just got its own unique story. So yeah, that is a game you really want to check out. Now, this one was also one of my favourites. The first game I ever played where I could fly a jet and I felt cool. It was like playing Top Gun, but without Tom Cruise. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, a good game. At the time, it felt fluid, fast, and it looked amazing. But going back to it, it's a bit choppy as you do the spin, you know, and fire the rockets. But the sprites are big, big sprites, and the colours are great. And to be honest, I think I like this version more than the Mega Drive version. Just because it was the first version I ever played. But yeah, look at that artwork. That sold it for me. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm playing that. That looks sick. It looks really good. But yeah, um, and this is a game I used to play with my brother a lot. Rampage. Great two player game. Probably one of the first two player games I ever played, if you think about it. Yeah, it was. Um, anyway, I love the fact you had three mods to choose from. A giant gorilla, obviously King Kong, a giant lizard, and some kind of like rat thing. But the graphics were crisp. I love the fact that I could just terrorize the city, eat people. There's loads of little nice touches, like you could like um, punch an electric sign, it would electrocute you, and you'd fall off. And just the way the buildings fell down, and just the way you could. It's one of those first games where you could really interact with the world, I guess. Because every other game you you know, kill an enemy and that's about it and get to the end of the level, but this, this was, you was, you were destroying level. So you were kind of like, altering things, and to me that was, that was pretty cool, and that was very different. And I don't think I kind of had that feeling for a while, not until probably I played Red Fraction on the PlayStation 2, that I could slightly alter the world and damage things and make an impression on the world, but this is, I think, ahead of its time in that way. Now this one here, R-Type. Now I love this game and I hate this game. One, because I rented it countless, countless times. And two, because I'm embarrassed to say it, I can never get past the first level. So I've never seen, even now, I'm just terrible at it, just rubbish, even now, um, I've only ever seen the other levels if I've gone on YouTube and watched somebody else uh, play it, just out of curiosity. I, I just rubbish on it, but I still love it. I still love the way it plays, the way it feels. <sighs> I just wish I could get further. But hey ho, hey ho, maybe one day, one day I will. Right, this one, I didn't play as a kid. I picked it up at university when I still had my my old math system. I think this is the original one behind. A bit battered, but does the job. But this, it just looked cool. I thought, hmm. It was kind of when I thought I might start collecting again. It was probably about God, nearly 10 years ago now. And yeah, it's, it's basically Castlevania. Sega's rip off attempt of Castlevania. And I suppose that would be doing it a bit of an injustice, but to be honest, I think it's got its own little mood, its own vibe, Victoria, England, you're investigating um, strange kind of like, I think it's, um, it doesn't, uh, you're just fighting monsters really, yeah, strange disappearances or something, I think you're investigating something, but it, the only thing what makes it feel like Castlevania to me is obviously the, the fighting and the fact you walk up the stairs in that kind of like familiar way. Which I, I kind of don't like the stairs in Castlevania. It's one of the only games where I feel like stairs always gets me injured or hurt on any Castlevania game, including this. I always manage to like get halfway up the stairs and then an enemy appears out of nowhere and hits me and it, there's just nothing I can do. Quite irritating. Uh, but yeah, it's got its own kind of vibe, Victorian England, London vibe. Jack the Ripper's in there, so you get to kill him, which is quite cool. Uh, I think obviously Dracula's in there at some point. Yeah, I think he's probably one of the main bad guys. But you've all got horrifying waxworks and all kinds of weird kind of like ghostlies going on. So 
it is more ghosty than demony, to be honest. While I think Castlevania is more demons, this is more kind of ghosts and more of a London feel. But yeah, um, I definitely would pick it up. Um, I wish I played it as a kid because uh, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot. But yeah, and let's see what else we've got. We've got. To be honest, a lot of these games I played. They're good. Don't get me wrong, they're good, but. They're not the best, some of them. Like, Wonder Boy, it doesn't hold my attention. But it's nice to have. And Rocky, don't get me started, that's just a terrible game. But this is also good, obviously another Sonic game. But my issue with it is it's far too easy. It's just rings are everywhere. The graphics are great. It does feel a bit like Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive, except a bit choppier. But the sprites are good, the graphics are good. Music, music's, I don't think it's as good as the first and second game on the Master System, but it's a good game. But if you want that kind of like Sonic feel and you've played 1 and 2 on the Master System, or maybe even if you've got it, um, Spin Ball, which is a not very good Master System port, um, well, you can give it a whirl. I think it's a good game. Not as good as 2, and I'd definitely say. Sonic Hedgehog 1 is the best Master System game, and then it would go to. But I don't actually own Sonic the Hedgehog 1 box because one of my Master Systems has it installed already, has it inside. So I'm just not bothered buying it. Also, I was lucky enough, one Christmas as a child, my dad brought me a pad. Now, I didn't know anything about the Mega Drive or any other consoles. I don't think my dad had an idea either, really. I think he just grabbed something because it had the logo on, the same logo as this, so he picked this up and I was like, what, what is this? And to me I thought, oh, it's got all these extra buttons, this must make my games better. And obviously, in a way, it does because the D-pad is a lot better than the sloppy Master System one. But yeah, this is a wireless Master System controller, so I was quite ahead of my time really, without realising it, I was playing uh, games on the couch wirelessly and this is the receiver on the front there and I don't know why I've always thought it looks nicer on this than it does my Mega Drive so I always keep it in and this is my controller of choice when I'm playing on the Mega Drive and, uh, on the Master System um, even though it's got far too many buttons but as a kid I looked at that and thought yeah oh, look at that controller it's, it looks super this is definitely going to help me complete Sonic Hedge 1 more quickly in actual fact, it didn't really. Uh, I realised quickly that the other buttons didn't do anything. So, but I didn't care. I didn't care. It worked. I could move the character, so that was enough for me. Um, also played a few light gun games with the light phaser. I think it was called, but I don't actually own that anymore. But there's some pretty decent light gun games. So if you're interested in that kind of genre, I'd pick that up as well. Well. Um, this has been a little look at my memories of the Master System. Um, to be honest, in a lot of ways, the Master System and my dad are kind of one thing. I'll always associate those early memories of playing games with my dad with this. With this and the Mega Drive, really, because he, he loved Desert Strike and Jungle Strike. He was kind of one of those kind of um, uh, players. Platformers, it wasn't really good at, hence, don't fall into the drink. But yeah, yeah. I'm hope hopefully my dad's going to get better soon. Um, but it's just nice to look back at these things, realise how much your dad loves you by giving you something. And to be honest, I love you even more for the fact that you got me this rather than a Super, uh, Super Nintendo or an NES or even a Mega Drive at the time because I got to experience these games and then I could play the Mega Drive after rather than going back. And to me, they felt new and they felt amazing, and it was cool that I could actually interact with something moving on the screen. But yeah, yeah. so I've been absolutely obsolete, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you're interested, and please um, await more content. Thanks so much.